guys, DMG18 here, and standing behind me is one of the nicest Ram pickup trucks you can buy. This is the Ram 1500 Laramie Longhorn, and today I'm going to take you through an in-depth look at it. nicer and nicer, their prices also go up by a lot. In fact, this Laramie Longhorn here costs 63000 as a starting price, and that's with four options. So that makes you wonder, uh, as trucks get more expensive, are they actually really as good as their price? $63,000 can buy you a lot in the car market. It can buy you a rather nice Mercedes E-Class or maybe a BMW 5 Series. But, but why should you pick this truck over one of those cars? Let's go through and look. So the main reason people would pick trucks is of course the bed. So the Laramie Longhorn comes to your choice between a 5'7 or a 6'4 bed. This truck is equipped with the 5'7. So if you take a look, it's a rather large bed back there and you can put quite a bit of stuff. Taking a look now at the rear, the truck comes standard with these LED uh, taillights and this comes on the sport trims and or higher, so this truck receives it. If we look lower here, there's a large bumper with these uh, parking sensors in the back here. There's four all the way across, two on each side. And then we have dual exhaust in the back here for the 5.7 liter V8. And there's also a nice 4x4 badge here, as well as a big Ram badge. Another big reason people buy trucks is, of course, for the towing ability. So down here, we, of course, have your hitch here. This is a class 4 hitch receiver, and it's an option on this pickup truck. And it also comes with these two little uh, areas here you can put your hooks on. Uh, when you go to tow. As well, we have, of course, both power outlets here for your trailer electricals. So uh, this here is the kind of newer style. It's like round and you can jam something in there. And then this is the older version here, which is called a four in a row or something like that. And uh, yeah, so that's very convenient when you go to tow. It's easy. You just hitch here and then you can plug in up there. So the definite big thing about the side here is, of course, how big this truck is. So it actually spans 229 inches from the front to the back and it's 103 inches wide, including the mirrors, which is extremely wide. And basically, it's a typical truck. So this truck happens to have this large crew cab here. When you open a Laramie Longhorn, there's only this cab option. You only get the crew cab. And like I said before, there's options with which beds you want. So this one here is equipped with five foot seven, but there's even a longer one with the six foot four that's even longer. So another thing we have down here is, of course, these. So these are optional 20 inch wheels and all the trucks uh, with for the Laramie Longhorn range do come with 20 inch wheels and it's wrapped in two 7560s on front and rear. And also another option here is of course this big side step here. Looking now at the front of the Laramie Longhorn, we first have this grill. So this grill is available on all of the more premium Ram vehicles and this started in 2017 with them changing out just a normal grill with the Ram logo on the front to actually having this full out like word spelling out Ram and also these cool little indent things. And it's a whole different grill and it gives the truck way more premium look. As well, of course, as we have the new headlights here, these are HID day LED daytime running lights that come on these sport trims and higher. And then moving down here, we have fog lights and these big tow hooks. And we also have the front parking sensors too. And there's six sensors. So there's four on the front here, two on each side. And then on each like real side here, there's one more here for obstacles that are kind of in the front of you to the left or right of your vehicle. Underneath the hood, we have the 5.7 liter still. Underneath the hood we have the 5.7 liter Hemi V8 that makes 395 horsepower and 410 pound-feet of torque and um, this engine they use in almost every single product they use now so it's in all of their muscle cars like the Challenger and the Charger, it's in the Jeep Grand Cherokee, the Dodge Durango and it's also in uh, the Chrysler products too so it's in the Chrysler 300 and um, yeah it's a pretty good engine and it's basically what they use in every single one of their vehicles now. Once you're inside your Ram 1500 Laramie Longhorn, you're immediately greeted with one of the nicest cabins I've actually been in. Cars, trucks, SUVs, sports cars, anything. This interior is really nice. So you have this awesome brown leather here and it's beautiful and it really gives the truck kind of like this country vibe to it and it has this uh, Laramie Longhorn badge stitched right in and Rams I know for their really nice interiors on them they're really good 
and no matter what model you choose, even the more base models, they still have pretty nice interiors, but all of the top end models have their own uh, specific interiors. So there's a couple choices for this, but this one here is kind of just the, the basic um, entry level brown one. And it's really nice. Both interiors of the Land Remodel one, if you pick them, they're both gonna be really nice. So let's start it up. So all you have to do is to put your foot on the brake and use the start stop button to start right up for you. And the 5.7 liter V8 will start right up. Uh, so the first thing you notice about this truck is, unlike a lot of trucks that otherwise have, just have uh, column shifters or they'll have a shifter right here. It's pretty normal for most vehicles. It'll have it right here. So this one has uh, a twisty knob. So you can basically twist it in what gear you want. So there's reverse neutral drive. That's another cool feature. Another thing that's located here on this as area is there's the buttons to change between four wheel drive. So you have four modes. So there's four wheel drive automatic, which is what this truck's in right now. And that'll choose basically if you're in a condition where the truck can't uh, get grip, it'll turn it into four wheel drive, but the rest of the time it'll just be in rear wheel drive mode or two wheel drive. And then there's four wheel drive lock, so that's permanent four wheel drive. There's also four wheel drive low, which is when you're uh, doing off road things and you just want to stay in the lower gears for the truck not to shift. And then there's also two wheel drive mode, so you lock it right into its rear wheel drive mode only. Um, let's take a look first at the infotainment system. So the infotainment system is the standard Uconnect system that they find in pretty much every single Chrysler product nowadays. So it's a good system, although it does lack some of the newer features like Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. This car doesn't have that. But otherwise, it's a fantastic touchscreen. So first of all, you're going to notice that it is really big. So this is a 8-inch display, I think, and it's really nice and big. The graphics are all right. They're not the best, but I really like this because it actually has a picture of a like a bull head, and it kind of resembles the exact same bull that you find on the seats here, and it even has kind of leather gray material in the background, just like the leather you find on the seats here, which is really nice. So let's take a look at it. So it's a easy system to work with. So on the bottom here, you have all these banners and it'll bring you into all these different modes. So first let's start off. So we have the radio system here. So the radio system's here. Then we also have the media. So this is if you want to connect like your phone to it and you want to play the music off your phone. Uh, we have the controls here. So this control center here is to change things like the heated seats, the ventilated seats. There's also buttons down here for this too. And you can also put your thing into the back of the camera if you want. So that way you can actually see what's behind you, like so. And then we can also go back and have some other controls in here. If we go into apps, this is where all your apps are. And basically how it works is you can pick up one of these apps. So you push hard on it, similar to how it works on the iPhone. You can push down on it and you can actually move it into different places here. So you can switch them out. So if you want your passenger heated seat there and something else, you can do it that way, uh, which is nice to use. And then if we go in here, so this is where all of your climate and uh, features will be found. So if you push the climate button here, uh, this will control all the climate and most of this you can control down here. So of course, uh, if you're looking at the climate, there's the uh, plus and minus arrows. It's a dual zone climate control. Actually, it's a triple zone climate control because in the rear lift, but in the front seats, you don't have any, have any control over what the rear has. Um, there's also the defroster buttons here, which can be found up here. There's the air conditioning and the recirculating mode, which can be found up here. And the auto button can be found up here. So all of this is built up here. So you never actually really have to touch any of the climate buttons. They can all be used through here. And that's kind of a cool feature that you have these opportunities to use both. Uh, and they both can be adjusted through here, so even if you do do it, it's in real time, so it'll update pretty fast, which is good. If you go over to navigation, most of the trucks uh, will come with navigation if they're higher up, although you do have to suspect it out to have it. So even if the truck comes with Uconnect, you might have to pay about $800 extra to receive the actual mapping capabilities. So if we go in here, it's a pretty good map, so you have a picture of a Ram truck, and then it's a pretty good map. I think Garmin builds this, I'm not completely sure, um, but it's a pretty good system here. The graphics aren't the best really for what this truck is, but I think it's pretty cool still um, to have and it's pretty easy to work with and navigate through. And then lastly, you have here the phone buttons so you can pair your phone with it and make phone calls and stuff like that. Let's move over to the gauge cluster. So the gauge cluster is really cool. So this has the Laramie Longhorn Edition badge at the top and through that you can actually see it's very much like the rest of the truck's interior and that's really the cool thing. Very, very few trucks you'll find will actually have their gauge clusters apparent to the models of their truck. So it's one of the coolest gauge clusters I've actually seen. So on the left, you, of course, you have your tachometer. On the right, you have your speedometer. There's also the uh, oil temperature on the left there and the fuel on the right in the bottom corners there. And in the center, we have uh, a display. So this display here, you can actually uh, switch through things like this. So you can actually uh, use these buttons on your steering wheel to search through different menus. So there's things like trans transmission temperature, as well as you can look at your uh, tire pressure monitors. And then there's also a ton of other things you can use through here, especially when you're using your cruise control and stuff like that. And there's buttons throughout the steering wheel. Speaking of the steering wheel, this is a really, really nice steering wheel. So it's nice and leather. It's currently heated, which feels really nice. It's 
minus 20 out, which it happens to be today. And on here you have this kind of bronzed plastic that kind of goes in with the mood here. So all the plastic you'll find is bronzed. And then also in the back of the cage cluster, it's also that same color, which is nice. And then on the right you have, here you have your cruise control buttons like so. Another great thing about having the, uh, the shifter down here instead of on the column is that you have, uh, in this case, actually no stock that comes out, which is a little bit strange looking, but it's kind of nice. And then all of it's put into here. So this is where your turn signals are located down here. Uh, and your lights are located down at the bottom left here. So it's kind of cool. And then moving over towards the door panels here. So the door panels uh, have these window switches on them, which are kind of cool. They're kind of like humped, uh, which, is, which is nice. And the fronts, of course, are automatic uh, window folding down. And then we also have the controls here for the mirrors. So there's a button also here that you can actually fold in the mirrors, which is nice. You can fold them out again. Uh, the controls for the windows here. The quality aspect is also really nice, especially on the door panel. So you have leather up here. You have this fake wood trim, which is not too nice, but it's throughout the interior. Uh, it looks really bad kind of on the steering wheel. I think it's a little bit too like fake looking. And even this is fake looking, but this is way over the top. Up top here, you have this leather-like uh, surface. So I believe it is leather or maybe leatherette, but it's kind of hard and solid. Although you really would never be putting your hands up here. And once again, this is a truck. It's not really for the quality aspect. It's for the ease of use. So maybe you don't want uh, like nice materials up here because you might get the truck dirty. So you don't really want uh, like nice leather up there. So it's gonna be harder to clean. Up top here, it's uh, kind of hard touch plastic. So it's not as nice, but it's not the worst materials I've seen in a vehicle. FCA does a lot of plastics, but their plastics aren't actually that bad. They're pretty high quality as far as plastics go. They're just, they're not soft touch, but anyway, uh, this truck is also specced out with the optional Alpine sound system, which is a fantastic sound system. So the big thing you notice up here is up top, uh, there's of course a big speaker, and then there's also the normal speakers throughout the truck, which is nice. Uh, and that's actually a subwoofer too, I think. Uh, up top here, you have a nice little area you can put something in, so sunglasses, or if you want to put your keys maybe up there, it has a RAM logo. Uh, take a look down here, you have a nice little storage area, as well as this larger storage area here for drinks. If uh, larger storage area here you can store things in and then you have two cup holders here and this one happens to have a matching water bottle that goes with the, the wood but the coolest thing I think about the entire area down here is this so it's the awesome uh, wooden it's real wood it's a cover for your area down here so it's really nice it's all kind of broken up to little bits because I believe it rolls up uh, at the back here or maybe folds down uh, and it's nice it's nice chrome and there's such a chrome throughout the area around here and then moving over to this so trucks happen to have huge center consoles so this one's no surprise this thing is completely massive and it's actually a two-tier storage system so you have a big one down here at the bottom and then up top here you have a smaller one to put some of the smaller items you have up here and then up top here you of course have the Laramie Longhorn Edition uh, badge that sits on top here and then there's lots of nice leather up here too taking a look up top here you of course have two regular sun visors uh, which are nice they have lights in them and then you have of course the button here for the sunroof so it has a one panel sunroof which is all you're gonna get with a ram pickup truck the only pickup truck in the entire segment that has it are the ford ones so there's the the ford f-150 and the super duties they have the dual panel sunroofs but this is only a single panel and then we also have the buttons here for i think a home link system it's not actual home link though it's some kind of variation that fca makes and then we, of course we have here the lights and then this here is for the rear window and then here's the sunroof controls here but overall it's a really really nice interior i'm really shocked by um, how nice it is, how nice this leather is, and uh, let's now take a look at the rear seats that are which are just as nice. So now I'm in actually the rear of the Laramie Longhorn, and once again the quality back here is still really good, so you have this nice brown leather, that's really nice, and um, as most crew cab trucks are, there's just a ton of space back here. It's uh, extremely shocking about the amount of rear space in the back of a pickup truck, but it really is. So I still um, really like the leather back here, it still has this nice kind of um, badging that goes on top of it and also if you look down here there's air vents so these air vents are pretty cool they actually move around and there's also buttons here for the rear heated seats so it's only the outboard positions and it's two stage same as the front the front has two stage heated and ventilated seats as well which I forgot to mention before and um, so if you also look down here you have a nice 12 volt outlet um, which is good in the front you have a 115 volt household style outlet uh, as well located in the bottom right corner I'll show it now and then also you have down here these two cup holders that are actually embedded into the rear of the truck here which is nice uh, and then you have a lot of space back here and then move over to the middle seat the middle seat is also quite nice I um, the only issue is the floor hump is pretty high uh, so your legs are kind of up but there's still a lot of space back here and it's, it's still just as nice as any part of this truck 
and another really cool thing is, first of all, you have this here. So this is the uh, little cardboard piece that comes in when you actually buy this truck, and it has the, the leather care guide on the back um, to kind of have uh, to kind of tell you how to take care of this, of course, really nice leather in the back of the truck. And it's a really cool piece. It's on this kind of old rope here, but it gives the truck a really cool look. Uh, here, I'll show it in the front. That, and that's really nice. Another thing back here I want to notice is uh, there's these... Um, map pockets. So most cars just have these little tiny pockets in the back here. This truck here has actual map pockets, but there's this cool little belt strap type thing with this lid that goes on top of them, and it's really nice. I'll show a video of that right now. Um, let's take a look in the, again at the quality aspect. So up top here, it's the exact same kind of this harder leather, and then we of course have the big wood and some more brown leather down here, and the armrests are nice and padded, uh, which is nice. And overall, the rear seat and the entire interior of this truck is really nice. So guys, that's the 2017 Ram 1500 Laramie Longhorn Edition. So I really like this truck. I'm almost shocked about how nice it is. When I got in this thing, I was kind of expecting, yeah, it would be really nice, but this is way over my expectations of really what a pickup truck is. And I think Ram still does build nicest interiors. I know Ford and Chevy are trying to keep up, but this interior is just astonishing. The exterior is also really nice in this truck, although I do believe this truck does need an update, as it really hasn't updated since it's debut in 2012. Um, slight changes on the outside, like those LED um, taillights and headlights, uh, those are kind of nice still, and the new grill, and a lot of the new components inside, uh, mainly talking about kind of the uh, technology built into the truck, that's new. But at the end of the day, it's still kind of an older truck, an older platform. It still has the 5.7 liter Hemi underneath the hood, which is, uh, a, which is a pretty good engine, although the truck does kind of feel kind of slow. And the um, last thing I'm going to do today is, of course, take it on a test drive. So uh, you can watch now as I ride along in the Ram 1500 Laramie Longhorn. So now it's time to go for a drive. So this car, of course, has 395 horsepower coming from a 5.7 liter V8. And there's also an option now for the 3 liter V6 uh, Eco Diesel. It's an option as well. But uh, most people, I think, will pick the 5.7 liter. It's a very common engine, as Ram likes to say that it's the best selling V8. Canada. So of course the V8 does make a really nice sound at the back and uh, the exhaust does play a big part to that. So on all trucks, sport models are higher, they do receive the dual exhaust if you do choose to get the 5.7 liter V8. Uh, all the EcoBoosts I believe do have turn exhaust, they'll probably just come out the side and we'll be in mounted at the back there. As far as trucks being able to have exhaust that come out the back, there's very few that get it from the factory. So I believe this and maybe the Ford Raptor are the only ones. Uh, all the other trucks have it just coming out the side, uh, a normal pipe. And I don't really advertise it that much, although I do see lots of 5 liter V8 uh, Ford F-150s that have aftermarket exhaust that come out the back. But this one here is probably the only one you can get standard from the factory. So guys, that's the conclusion basically of the 2017 uh, Ram 1500 Laramie Longhorn 5.7 liter, 5 foot 4 bed. Uh, it's a really good truck uh, at the end of the day, and although it does cost a lot of money, would I pick this over maybe a mid-sized luxury sedan like the Mercedes E-Class or BMW 5 Series? Probably actually. These trucks are extremely practical. Although you aren't getting that really good German technology and build quality out of one of these trucks, the build quality is a little bit bad. Um, and the technology is a little bit behind, but I think at the end of the day you're getting a lot more vehicle for the money and Paying premium prices for a car. You don't get as much as paying premium prices for a truck Anyway, thanks for watching make sure to subscribe and check out some of the links in the description for different things you can sign up for and um, Once I hit 100 subscribers, I will plan on doing a giveaway so you can subscribe and be entered automatically and also check out some of my other videos and um, have a good day